Welcome to week two of NCR 507. This could be more appropriately titled, What Makes a Good Conflict Resolution Story? In the role of neutral mediators, we are looking for a story that provides the perspective of all clients. Conflict resolution processes are often developed from stories or myths whose origins have become forgotten or are told from a biographical perspective. Do we really know the processes behind ending wars, merging companies, or peacefully integrating stepchildren into a family? As a mediation intake coordinator, I often listen to clients who assumed they were ethical and rational and the other party was decrepit. I often listen to one side of a story that glorifies the storyteller in a divorce case intake as benign and portrays their ex as completely uncouth. The conflicts escalate as in-laws become outlaws and everybody seems to have their own opinion about who is right and who is wrong. Our stories often get distorted owning to confidentiality clauses and not knowing all the underlying interest of each party of a conflict. Conflict stories are also subjective. I have co-mediated cases, and when we debriefed a few days later, the other mediator remembered different details and forgot the details I thought were important. How are conflict stories related to research? Research in NCRP begins with a conflict story or a case study. As neutral mediators, we must determine whether there was a somewhat balanced amount of rational behavior and interest among all the parties. If we can't find redeemable qualities in each client's story, it probably isn't appropriate for a conflict resolution process. Throughout the years, I have asked my student, what makes a good conflict story? When I have attended research conferences, the best presenters tell stories along with presenting their data. In the television show Mythbusters, a pair of experimental researchers use a scientific process to determine the soundness of a myth. Likewise, NCRP has many books with many under-researched best practices. These practices such as separate the person from the problem or focus on interest, not positions, may be myths that need busting. One of your course objectives is to critique the strengths and weaknesses of a piece of research and explain the criteria upon which you base your critique. I'd like students to critically look at the conflict stories and resolution processes to determine whether they are grounded in actual research or myths that need to be busted. NCRP practitioners communicate details of conflicts through stories. Conflict stories have many unique variables. They are non-fiction narrations, which include exposition, characters, setting, and a plot. Mediators and facilitators must listen, read, or observe conflicts from multiple points of view. Furthermore, many conflicts cannot be shared owing to confidentiality. Often, Variables of a conflict story such as the demographic variables, parties involved, type of conflict, and severity of the conflict can be reduced to an incident report form or entered into a database. However, as an NCRP practitioner, you must use the details of a conflict story to determine if it is appropriate for a conflict resolution process. 
A conflict story describes a meaningful and divisive conflict at the interpersonal, group, organizational, or international level. The story clearly identifies all the significant clients, the level of conflict, and the interest of each party. Demographic variables are either stated or commonly understood by the audience. The details about each character includes gender, ethnicity, personal challenges, and relevant cultural variables. The issues are described from each party's perspective. Each party is recognized as a rational individual with valid interest. Finally, details are provided about the impact each client's position has on the other clients. Winslade Monk describe conflict resolution as a storying process. They use a postmodern strategy to deconstruct stories and create a shared meaning for clients involved in a conflict. The narrative mediation process looks at how people organize their experience as stories. We use stories to make sense of conflicts and the dynamics of relationships. Participants in a conflict often rehearse, reorganize, and rationalize their stories to make their experience the most accurate from their own perspective. Often, the details change according to the perspective of the person telling the story. The role each client plays in telling or interpreting a conflict story impacts the other parties in the process. One example of, a, of different perspectives of a conflict story is the use of cell phones in high school. Students, paraprofessionals, custodians, teachers, counselors, coaches, parents, district level administrators, and school board members may have completely different perspectives of cell phone use. A high school principal would get one story from a teacher who believes a student is using a cell phone to cheat during a test. A student who is only texting a friend to about where to meet after break um, is a different perspective and a parent might want their child to have access to a cell phone for emergencies. The evidence can be deleted with a push of a button and all that remains are stories from each disputant's perspective. The conflict resolution assignment is for you to tell the underlying story about your research question. You are going to create a portfolio of research instruments such as observation sheets, interview guides, and surveys to research a conflict. You should be able to give an interesting story about the conflict, the interest of the parties, and adverse impact it has on the parties' lives. The whole point of your research is to explore satisfactory solutions to the conflict or generate more effective conflict resolution processes. I look forward to reading the underlying conflict story that motivated your research. And with any presentation, here are the references to the books that I use. Now, once again, I look forward to reading the underlying conflict that motivated your research.